Open three, January 2018, I suggested last night. Maggie, 27, already had it prepared. I figured that would be one. If not, I was going to do it with you anyway. 27, we had a right triangle, ABC, where the right angle was at C. So A and B are my two acute angles. And it's asking, all right, if sine of A increases, what happens to the cosine of B? Well, in this particular problem, what do you know about these two values? Well, you're, okay, let, let me back up. What do you know about angles A and B? They have to add to 90. Gotta, because that's our right angle and there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So I know these have to add to 90, which means if A and B add to 90, what do I know about sine and cosine? Oh boy. A and B add to 90. So 40, 50, 30, 60. If you do the sine and the cosine of those angles, they should be equal to each other. Okay? So think about it. If they're always equal, if sine increases and they're always, they have to be equal, what has to happen to cosine? Also has to increase. Okay? Because they're always equal. In this case anyway, all right? In this case, A and B add to 90, which tells me sine and cosine are always equal. So if one increases, the other's got to increase because they have to stay equal. Okay? Matt, you good? Okay, everyone else, we good there? I know that wasn't the greatest two-point question. I'm not a big fan of it, but again, A and B add to 90. They got to be equal. So if one goes up, the other has to go up to remain equal. Any other part twos and threes? Meg, let's go. 28. All right, you're going to have to talk to me about what the deal was with 28. We didn't do this one yet? No? Okay, I just, I do so many in different classes, so that's why I just ask. Okay, I know we went over this formula, though. Okay. I don't have to copy the rest. We're looking for angle Q, okay? But the 500 pi is the unshaded region, okay? So going back, what was the formula we did yesterday? Area of a sector is equal to what? Measure of the arc, yep. Yep, keep going. I'll write it. Plus. Minus. Week and a half left. Let's go. Times. Regroup. Pi R squared. And in this problem, this is what I'm looking for right here. Because angle Q is a central angle, which means it's equal to its arc measure. Good? So I have a couple options, and I need your help here, class. If I plug 500 pi in here and solve for the measure of the arc, I am not going to get angle Q. I'm going to get that angle right there. Could I get angle Q if I knew that angle? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. We're getting nervous. Settle down over there. We're a week and a half and away. All right, a week and a half and away. We good? Okay, moving on. So that's one way we could do it. Meg, you good? Plug 500 pi in. Solve for the angle because you know the radius is 25. So you could get rid of the pi's and then get the measure of the arc all by itself. And then subtract from 360 and you got angle Q. Now, now, what if I actually wanted the area of that sector? So I could plug it in and solve for it. Anybody have an idea how I could find the area of that sector right here? Connor? I could find the area of the full circle, pi r squared and subtract the 500 pi from the unshaded. Okay, that could also go in there as well. It's up to you. So two different ideas. That'll get the job done. Parts two and three, others here. Others. I have two multiple choices I want to do with you, and the rest of the time is going to be on your own today, but I want to still ask questions. Hi, Orion. How are we doing back there? 32 for you? Absolutely.
Okay, here we go. What gave Orion problems here? Okay, let's stop right there. Describe it. It's a dilation, but you knew, hey, you've been told that writing that word isn't going to be good enough. Because if you're going to write down the word dilation, what are you dilating around, and what's the scale factor? It has to be accompanying it. You just can't write the word dilation here. It won't give you the credit. All right? We need a dilation about something with a scale factor of something. That's what we need to find, OK? Well, first of all, are we getting bigger or smaller as we go from ABC to ADE? Bigger. So at least I know in my mind, this number I'm about to put here for the scale factor has got to be bigger than 1. OK? Let's start actually here, because this is the easier part, where I'm dilating about. What point didn't change? A. So that's the point i got to dilate around, point A. Now, this, now to the scale factor. Well, I've already established that I'm dilating around point A. So what I'm going to find first is, all right, B goes to D in this problem, correct? So from A to B right now is up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. How many times do I do that? Well, I already did it once. And now up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. How many times did I go up 4 over 1? Three times. So that's what my scale factor is going to be. And it should do, and it should be the same if you went from A to C and then travel to E. All right, Chella, go ahead. Nope. Nope. Because we that's honestly that's what we assume how you did it. Okay, because I don't know any other way. Everyone good there? Orion, you good? You sure? Because there's a second part, which is explain why. The two triangles are similar. Well, what did you do? Dilating, dilation preserves, not distance, but angle measure. So that's all I need to write. Dilations preserve angle measure. So the triangles are similar. Great question. Hi, Emma. That's fine, too. Yep. Because mm -hmm. you already wrote the scale factor of three proportionally. Anything else here, kiddos? Go in. Parts two through three. Was there any topics? Because I want to go to about 105 before I let you loose. Any topics that you've thought about? OK, keep thinking, please. Keep thinking about topics. Uh, two multiple choices we're going to do today. First one, number 15. Actually, we can go 11. Go to 11 first. Might as well go in order. Go to 11. This kind of piggybacks off of Orion's question here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're ready with 11. We have two rectangles. We got an A, B, C, D, and an A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. How did I get to the prime one? How was the prime one created? OK, let's stop right there. So I know the two rectangles aren't congruent, but they're at least, they're not congruent, but they're at least similar. All right. And I tell you the scale factors 2 to 3, which other statement here is correct? Are the perimeters in a ratio of 2 to 3? Are perimeters in a ratio of 3 to 2? Areas 2 to 3, or maybe area 3 to 2? Well, hold on. We're talking about perimeter and area here. Anybody remember? We just did it here, the last two units. How these relate to each other? 
What's the deal here? Anything? That's correct, right? The perimeter and similarity are equal. What about here? The area I got a square, so I can eliminate the area ones because it should be something of four to nine instead. Okay, what about I'm left with one to two? Rectangle ABCD has a perimeter that is two thirds the perimeter of rectangle ABCD, or the prime one has a perimeter that is three halves the perimeter of rectangle ABCD. Where are we going with? They're the same, right? They're the same? Yes? No? I have some people shaking their head yes, and some people shaking their head no. Okay. Which rectangle is the smaller one? The original one or the prime one? Why the prime one? Because scale factor is less than one. So the perimeter should also be smaller in the prime one. So which one are we going with? Choice, choice one. Are we okay there? I feel, I don't feel too confident right now. Are we okay? Perimeter, the rectangle, the, the prime rectangle is smaller than the Original, so the perimeter's got to be smaller than the original. And then 15. Which transformation will carry a square onto itself? Not carry, not carry. All right, here we go. A reflection over one of its diagonals. Flip, take every point right now, flip it over. Is that square going to still be where it is? Okay. We're looking for the not one. A 90 degree rotation around the center. So turn it 90 degrees, same square, same position. Yep. It's not moving anywhere. A 180 degree rotation around one of the vertices. All right, I'll pick this one. All points rotate 180 degrees around. Is that square gonna be in the same spot? No, here you go, ready? See this point? It's gonna go down here, isn't it? 180 degrees through. This one's gonna go down here, this one's gonna go to the opposite side. So it's gonna look something like this right here. Okay, that's, that's pretty clutch right there, I know. Anything else? We all right with that one? Okay. I'm giving you time right now to try some stuff on your own in this exam. I will let you know the multiple choice answers, just so you don't have to get out your Chromebooks or anything, just flip to the back of the packet. The multiple choice answers are right there. If you're working on a part two or three or four, then yes, get your Chromebook out to look up the solutions. All right, I'm gonna walk around helping you guys out. Stay on task here. All right, stay on task. All right, you got 15 minutes here of just grinding it out here. This is, this is a review session right now.